Tell, tell us about yourself. Tell us who you are, what you do. Yeah, sure. My name is Rob Blaine. I'm from the United Kingdom, and um, I take care of Genesis offerings related to artificial intelligence for the Europe, Middle East, and Africa market. Right. So, what does that does that like mean? Like. Um, so that's any offering that Genesis has related to artificial intelligence. So that could be related to chatbots, or it could be related to predictive analytics. Um, and I help customers figure out how they're going to implement those technologies in their organization. Right. I have a couple of questions because I. Um, uh, so what could be solved with implementation of chatbots or uh, AI, artificial intelligence? Yeah, there are obviously um, great gains to be had by implementing chatbots, especially in regards to reducing cost. But artificial intelligence is not just about uh, chatbots. One of the key other capabilities is predictive analytics. And you can use predictive analytics to um, improve decision making anytime you have to make a decision. For example, deciding when the best moment is to engage with a customer. Um, who might be, for example, a hot lead about to buy something or who might need help on your website, to choosing which agent would be the best one to solve a customer problem, to optimize KPIs like uh, Net Promoter Score or Revenue. Um, it's not just about chatbots. Uh, could you say that chatbots and artificial intelligence are able to accomplish all the tasks right now? Chatbots definitely can't uh, accomplish everything now, and I think that's really key to remember when you're defining how you're going to implement a chatbot. What you really need to look for is uh, the low-hanging fruit. So you need to figure out um, the top reasons why customers are contacting you, figure out uh, which of those reasons are easy to automate, and, and start there, because that's what gives you your business value. If you try to automate everything with a chatbot, you're going to end up with a very expensive science project um, that doesn't really give you a good return on your investment. Right. So, uh, in artificial intelligence uh, as a as a as a supplement to the chatbot, or how how does that work? Um, yeah. So, I, I think um, you know chatbots use uh, parts of artificial intelligence to operate. So, they have natural language processing capabilities, for example, that allow you to determine why a customer is contacting you and extract information from uh, the messages that the customer sends you. Um, but it's also really important to have humans involved in the mix as well, because we know that chatbots can't solve everything right now, and especially when um, you have uh, an emotional problem, like a complaint and a customer's frustrated, um, or when it's something complex, you still really need that human touch to be able to solve customer problems. So humans need to be really aware of what chatbots are doing. So, okay, so we go back now. So what, what exactly is the in integration of these two systems? humans and, uh, and artificial intelligence? Um, I think it, it's really about context. Um, like I was saying, chatbots definitely can't solve all problems right now. So um, when a human is needed, you need to really ensure that um, that human has the context of everything that happened in the chatbot so they can make the handoff seamlessly and solve the customer problem uh, without breaking the customer experience. Um, but we can also use artificial intelligence to help agents solve customer problems too. So we can give them suggestions mm -hmm. on uh, how they could solve the customer problem and also ensure that we choose the right agent to solve a customer problem using AI. Right. Will automation, uh, automation solutions be able to completely replace human people in the future? I don't see a time yet when they will completely replace humans. Like 2050. Yeah, maybe in, in 2050 on, years. On. But just you know, in, in, in the time that we can see ahead of us, you know, I think humans are pretty bad at predicting what's going to happen in the next 20 to 50 years. I think that's <laughs> we've seen that many times. But I think if you look at as, as far as we can see, um, until bots understand human emotion, I don't think they'll ever completely replace humans in uh, customer experience. Do you, do you think it's actually possible that they will understand the emotion? Um, I think it's possible they might be able to fool, trick us into thinking they do. <laughs> there was this one guy who actually said that uh, when when they start to understand our um, emotions, we have to uh, you know imp implant some some sort of a switch off because <laughs> they might want to kill us or something. So so they automatically <laughs> switch off. You know. Yeah, I, I agree, and that's definitely true. But hopefully, that's not a problem we have to worry about too much about <laughs> the customer experience <laughs> domain. Well, you never know. You <laughs> yeah. never know. So you know these frustrated <laughs> customers. Oh God. Damn Damn it, you know. And the, you know what, okay, so uh, the the final question is: What about uh, critical factors um, that organizations can exploit artificial intelligence customer experience? I think 
um, when you exploit artificial intelligence, the key thing you need is to have plenty of data and be able to, and have people in your organization who understand that data. Because no matter whether you're creating a predictive algorithm, whether you're creating a natural language processing solution, the way you train AI is on good quality data. Um, so that's, for me, the most important thing that, that organizations need to be aware of if they want to exploit uh, artificial intelligence. You know, I, I, uh, very often I think about that people, you know, it's like a hype. You know, AI is like hype. It's like a blockchain, yeah. blockchain yeah. AI. Yeah. So you're like really agile, you know. Yeah. And uh, um, algorithms, algorithms and uh, artificial intelligence. How do you differentiate them? Because they are different. Well, I think artificial intelligence is um, a term that's quite open to interpretation. Mm -hmm. um, but I, for me, when I, I, I always try to think of it from a practical point of view of what can I do with artificial intelligence. And um, for me, that is automating customer interactions and making better decisions. So that's, that's how I try to think about artificial intelligence. Right, okay, thank you very much. Thank you very, thank much. You very much. So we, we will hear your lecture a little later. Yes. Yeah, okay, great, thank thanks.